Hello everyone, this is Jackie's movie. In this issue, let's take a look at the crime movie, Ransom, starring Mel Gibson. Tom was an Air Force pilot. After retiring, he established a subsidiary airline company. Now he was a tycoon in a valuable industry. Tom had a successful career and a happy family. This day was the 10th children's science in the park in New York City. His son Sean also wanted to participate in the Little Inventor competition, but because Mom Katie was the judge, for fairness and justice Sean could not participate in the game, he could only play with the spacecraft he invented in the park. Tom had been watching Sean. As he came and talked with acquaintances, Sean had gone. The couple searched all over the park and still found nothing. At first, they thought it was because their son could not compete so he was angry and deliberately hide somewhere, but then the couple contacted all the places where the son might go, but there was no news. When the phone rang, they followed the voice prompts and received a postal message. They opened the email and saw the video of their son being kidnapped. The kidnappers asked them to prepare a ransom of 2 million, and threatened to kill their son if they dared to call the police. Tom and Katie informed the FBI Hawkins after discussing, in order not to reveal his dissatisfaction, Hawkins disguised himself as a painter and came to Tom's house to arrange his actions. The reason why they chose to inform Hawkins was because Tom was involved in a union bribery case before. Hawkins was the one who investigated Tom. He had a better understanding of Tom's family. To save his son, Tom confessed to Hawkins that he did bribe, but he was lucky that no evidence was found. So he suspected that the one kidnapped his son was Brown who was imprisoned for the case. Because of his current situation, the kidnapper could not only demand a ransom of 2 million. Hawkins thought this was the cleverness of the kidnapper. The kidnapper knew that Tom could easily spend 2 million. So it wouldn't cause more trouble. But Tom always felt that the kidnapping case was an act of revenge against him. So Hawkins took Tom to the prison and met Brown. But through the reaction of Brown, the kidnapping case was indeed irrelevant to Brown. Carl, one of the kidnappers, had two previous thefts. This time he joined his brother Clark in the kidnapping case. But when he saw they kidnapped a child, he couldn't bear it. So as not to make Sean feel too scared, he told Sean a joke and Sean ate a lot of delicious food. When Clark knew about it, he told Carl it was unnecessary. Because they didn't plan to let Sean go. Carl didn't listen to Clark and went to the nearby store to buy food for Sean. He even rented a cartoon video for Sean. Although Sean's eyes were blindfolded, at least he could still hear. Officer Jimmy who was on duty in the shop noticed Carl. At night he quietly arrived by Carl's bed. However, what people did not expect was that Jimmy was the mastermind in the kidnapping case. He warned Carl to stop doing stupid things. The next day Tom finally received a call from the kidnappers. He followed Hawkins's explanation to delay the call as much as possible. But as a policeman, Jimmy knew these routines. He found his accomplice Miles who was proficient in tracking the signal. Hawkins and other people couldn't trace the source of the call. For the sake of Sean's safety, Hawkins found a substitute to pay the ransom instead of Tom. But Tom insisted on going by himself, he just wanted to rescue his son earlier. Hawkins was by his side. Trackers were placed in the cash box and the cart soil. The kidnapper called Tom when he was just going halfway. Tom followed the instructions of the other party to the designated leisure center. He jumped into the swimming pool while wearing clothes and got the key to the wardrobe. The chaser on his body cut off the signal after sinking into the water. Tom opened the closet to answer the phone inside. He changed clothes at the request of the other party and put the money in the canvas bag prepared by the other party. Then he took the car key, came out from the door, drove the car prepared by the other party, and went to the next place. Hawkins saw that the signal of the cash box did not move and brought people over. They saw the cash box was empty, Tom's car also stopped in place. After Tom left the leisure center, Jimmy followed closely and talked to Tom on the intercom. Tom didn't know why he came to him. Jimmy said he saw the case about the Tom Briber Club. He knew that Tom was not as shabby as he seemed. He saw Tom as a person who liked to use the money to solve problems. Besides, he had some hatred of the rich. Then Jimmy asked Tom to drive to the gravel field. Paying money and giving addresses would happen simultaneously. Carl brothers were waiting to get the money at the gravel yard. The original plan was for Clark to get the money. But Carl insisted on letting him take it. Carl decided to take the money and threatened Jimmy to let him release the hostage. Tom saw Carl appear and asked him for Sean's address. Carl looked blank and didn't know what Tom meant. He just took the gun and told him to hand over the money quickly. Carl was surrounded by FBI helicopters as soon as he got the money. This time, Jimmy who rushed to see the situation could only leave angrily. The FBI kept shouting but Carl didn't listen. When running, he injured a police officer in the flight. The police immediately opened fire and shot Carl. Tom hurriedly ran to inquire about the whereabouts of his son, but Carl was shot in the neck, he was unable to speak, and he lost his breath after a while. Clark watched Clark die and fled the scene angrily. 
Tom was dissatisfied with the sudden action of the FBI. If this angered the kidnappers, then his son's situation would be dangerous. Hawkins found the card about Clark through Carl's information. And Clark appeared in the surveillance of the park. So we listed Clark as the main suspect. The kidnapping case was also exposed by the media due to the leaked news of the FBI gravel field action. Tom thought about the whole process and suddenly realized whether he paid the ransom or not, the kidnapper wouldn't let Sean come back. Because Sean was a witness anyway. Besides, the kidnapper leader said that his subordinates would give him the address. As a result, the people who came to get the money didn't even know this, so Tom thought that as long as the kidnapper got the money, Sean would die. Old Black advised Tom not to think like this. Judging from his years of experience in handling cases, as long as Tom paid the ransom, he could have 70% sure to save Sean. Tom asked what he should do if he found the corpse. Hawkins was speechless, so he could only let Katie talk to Tom. Soon the kidnapper called again. Tom was much calmer than the beginning. He demanded to talk to his son otherwise they could receive nothing. Jimmy had to let Sean say a word to Tom. Then he warned that if the police showed up again this time, Sean would be dead. After confirming that his son was still alive, Tom decided to pay the ransom again, but he hoped that Hawkins would stop arranging helicopters and trackers. When Tom was waiting for the red light after departure, his video was on the TV in the nearby mall. At this time the kidnapper called and asked him to go to the location. Tom looked at the stop-motion image of his son and suddenly told the kidnappers that the plan had changed, and asked the other party to turn on the TV to the fifth channel, and he just disconnected the phone line after speaking. However, Tom's next move was beyond everyone's expectations. He said he was not ready to pay the ransom through a live broadcast on TV. He wanted to turn the 2 million ransom into a bounty for arresting the kidnappers. He would not withdraw the killing order until the kidnapper put his son back unharmed. Jimmy was at the bar and very angry while watching live TV. Tom's method was very difficult to understand. They accused him of being a bad father who risked his son's life. But Tom was tormented in making this decision. He knew that if he paid the ransom, his son would be dead. He just wanted to make a mess. At the same time, he wanted to let the kidnappers understand that if they didn't let Sean go, a crazy father could do everything. As Tom expected, the kidnappers had already experienced infighting. They couldn't kill the hostage but also couldn't get the ransom. Everyone wanted to get out. But if Jimmy didn't get the ransom, he would never give up. Hawkins couldn't persuade Tom to take back the bounty so he could only do Katie's work. Katie wanted to pay the ransom by herself, but she couldn't raise two million in a short time. Tom's family's nanny received a private call. The other party asked her to sneak a letter from the mailbox to Katie, and especially said that Katie couldn't let Tom and the police see this, otherwise Sean would be killed. According to the instructions of the other party, Katie came to an abandoned church alone at 2 a.m. She was suddenly sent to the attack by the kidnappers while waiting. The kidnappers asked her to tell Tom to withdraw the bounty or they would kill both of them. Then they left Sean's t-shirt for Katie. The kidnappers' moves made Tom firmer in his decision. At the same time, he announced to the media that he would increase the bounty to 4 million. Jimmy became angry when he saw the news. When he returned to the den, he ran into his girlfriend and was about to run away. Jimmy was going to make his last call to Tom. He let Tom say after hearing Sean's voice. He gave Tom one last chance to pay. However, Tom refused to pay and threatened, don't let me catch you, or I will show you why the flowers are so red. Jimmy, who was slightly angry, couldn't bear to fire a shot. Tom softened to the ground when he heard the gunshot. Jimmy knew the consequences of killing the hostages now. So he didn't actually shoot Sean. The accomplices saw him leave and they started to pack up. In fact, Jimmy did not leave but hid in the laundry room next to his house. He had long expected that his accomplices would be like this, so he started his next plan. Jimmy called the headquarters for support. He said that the gunman was found in the house, which might be a kidnapping case. Then he walked to the accomplice's car, showed the police card, shot and killed two accomplices. Then he took out another gun and fired a few shots at the wall. He wiped out the fingerprints and put the gun in the hands of the accomplice. He faked that he killed the gangsters as a way of self-defense. Jimmy's girlfriend saw everything and shot his shoulder. When his girlfriend raised his gun again, Jimmy shot her. What a suffocating scene. When the police arrived, Jimmy became a hero who saved the hostage. Tom couldn't thank the benefactor enough. Although the hostage was rescued, the police believed that the mastermind might still be out of the law. Therefore, the investigation of this case had not been stopped. Jimmy was afraid of trouble and wanted to run early. So while Sean was playing in the park, Jimmy came to find Tom to receive the bounty. Tom was happy to keep his promise when his son returned safely. He immediately wrote a check for 4 million to Jimmy. 
When Jimmy saw the dust settled, he curiously asked Tom why he didn't pay the ransom. Tom said that because the other party was a scumbag, he must be a person who could only talk but doing nothing. If the other party kept his word, he was willing to pay even ten times the ransom. Sean, who was coming back from playing at this time, panicked when he heard Jimmy's voice. I even peed into his pants. Tom saw everything in his eyes, but he did not move lightly. He still wrote the check and handed it to Jimmy. Jimmy noticed the change in Tom's expression and knew his identity had been exposed. Then the check Tom gave him must also be invalid. Facing the fierce Jimmy, as Tom wanted to protect his wife and child from getting harm, he asked Jimmy to go to the bank with him. He sent the money directly into Jimmy's account. Jimmy told Tom to transfer money by phone at home, but Tom did not compromise. Time had passed and Jimmy wanted to get the money quickly so he had to agree. He warned Tom if he dared to make tricks, Sean wouldn't be so lucky to come back alive next time. On the way, Jimmy asked Tom to arrange a plane to Mexico. Hawkins was in his office when Tom called the secretary. Knowing that the kidnapper was with Tom, he quickly arranged the action. When they came to the bank, everyone who saw Jimmy all praised his bravery. At this time, all the police received the news of searching for Jimmy over the radio. Jimmy and Tom came out of the bank after the transfer. A police officer approached and asked what was going on. Jimmy pretended and said that a colleague made a joke about him. Seeing that he couldn't get through it so he shot his colleague. When Tom saw this, he immediately jumped up and fought with Jimmy. Jimmy was injured and was beaten by Tom and could not fight back. Then he struggled to get up and ran to escape. Tom caught up and threw him into the glass window, then picked up Jimmy's gun. At this time, the police had surrounded the scene and shouted for Tom to put down his gun. Unexpectedly, Jimmy fought back. In the end, he could only blame himself and died under the gun. He turned the kidnapper into a 400W lottery, everyone had a chance to win. This is the first time I have seen such a rigid family. Well, this issue is over here, don't forget to subscribe to support our team. Thanks for watching, see you next time.